In the intro, I mentioned that I woke up early this morning to go to Queen's Criminal Court. A uh, reason for that was because I got plug- I recently got plugged into this uh, campaign for this um, young man named Prakash Turman. And Prakash actually had, he had one of his um, pretrial hearings at Queen's Criminal Court this morning. It was uh, originally scheduled to be held at noon. So we were planning to hold a rally at 11. So that we scheduled the rally at 11. We had like speakers lined up. Then at the last minute, uh, we found out that uh, instead of noon, it was being pushed back to 2.30. So, you know, the courts just like constantly do this shit, you know, to mess with them. But Prakash is a 22-year-old uh, man, young man. Um, he's a Guyanese immigrant from the Jamaica a- area of Queens. And in 2014, when he was only 15 years old, um, he was arrested by NYPD um, and interrogated for a really long time without the presence of a lawyer and then forced into a false confession for the murder of his friend at the time. So what happened was there was um, like a group of uh, people broke into his friend's house um, to steal marijuana. And it was um, it was like a botched robbery and his friend ended up being shot and killed. And so the NYPD uh, arrested him and they drove him around for three hours before finally taking him back to the police station and interrogating him. And he didn't have a lawyer present and he he was only 15. He was on like anti-anxiety medication and, um, you know, the cops don't care. They're just like, they do, they pull all this like dirty shit and like all these tricks to like um, force you into confessing something. And, uh, you know, like he and his mom weren't familiar with the criminal justice system and how it operates. So his mom was just like, just cooperate with the cops. Um, And, you know, like maybe like maybe they'll let you go. And so um, they forced him into a false confession, which he later recanted, but it was too late. So he was 15, and then he spent the next six years um, uh, at Rikers and another jail, like uh, between Rikers and another jail, four of those years in pretrial detention. Um, So he basically grew up in jail. He lost six years of his life in jail. Um, And so four of those years were pretrial detention. And then uh, they sentenced him to nine years to life. Uh, But that sentence was overturned. And then uh, he continued to like sort of sit in jail waiting for a new trial. And, you know, he's always maintained his innocence throughout. And, you know, he is like a brilliant organizer. So despite uh, limited phone and internet access, he managed to form the Free Prakash Alliance from jail. Um, And he like organized like a bunch of friends, other activists into this alliance and organized his own release from prison and organized his own bail to get out of uh, to get out of jail. And so they finally released him uh, and put him on home uh, house arrest in January of 2021. And ever since then, he has been on house arrest um, and going to the Queen's Criminal Court every few months for a new pretrial hearing. And it's expected that his like trial, his actual trial will um, probably be scheduled early 2022, um, February 2022. Um, but he's always maintained his uh, innocence throughout, and he, I believe, he has turned down, I believe, two plea deals um, that a Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz has presented to him um, that would have drastically reduced his sentence. Like uh, she presented him with a plea deal to plead guilty for assault, um, and she was like, "Okay, like if you just plead guilty to, to this, then." You can walk free within a few, within weeks, but he 
refuses to plead guilty to a crime that he didn't commit. And he's taking this tremendous gamble with his life um, because he is just, you know, uncompromisingly, um, uh, you know, he's innocent and he wants people to like realize he's innocent. So he's taking this gamble with his life and he's facing like, you know, it could be a life, life in prison. Um, so, uh, so the Free Prakash Alliance uh, since then has been uh, organizing rallies in support of Prakash. Every time he has a pretrial hearing in, front, in Queens Criminal Court, uh, they, they organize a rally uh, right beforehand to, uh, like, to show him support. And today there there was there was a rally. Uh, he had a pretrial hearing today, and um, you know a lot of people showed up. Um, I think one person mentioned that uh, his first pretrial hearing, maybe like four people showed up, and today close to forty people showed up. Um, so hopefully that number will like continue to grow and grow. But um, so there, we had a pretrial hearing. He had a pretrial hearing, um, and there was a rally beforehand. And then, you know, there was like this long gap between, uh, like, when the rally ended and uh, his uh, hearing because it got pushed back. So then we rallied from the uh, courthouse to uh, the office of Melinda Katz, uh, which is just across the street. And, um, you know, we were chanting, oh, so this is his GoFundMe. So if you want to help him out, uh, you can donate to his GoFundMe. Um, I think this pays for like his rent for his apartment. Uh, he's also going to be a father, by the way, he's expecting a baby. So, you know, they're potentially like trying to throw, uh, you know, a father into, into prison for life. Um, so we marched to Melinda Katz's office and we were chanting free Prakash, free Prakash. Um, and, uh, it sort of escalated to where like a couple, a few people were like holding up signs against the window and, you know, like they could hear us from inside the building. And, uh, like we saw like a couple of people like who worked for Melinda Katz inside the building and on their cell phones trying to call the cops. And then of course the cops came and they tried to like, you know, um, uh, get us out of there. I mean, like we weren't doing anything wrong. Nobody was doing anything wrong. Uh, we like, we were just exercising our right to protest, but wait, wait, can, can you repeat what he's accused of doing? He's accused uh, of shooting and killing his friend. Um, so it's like a murder charge, basically. Um, right. But they have no they have no right. evidence linking him to the crime. But That's how did another. They link him to the robbery, though. Because the robbery was part of. Okay, so this is where this is what this is really important. Right, right. So thank you for bringing that up. There's no physical or forensic evidence linking him to the crime. Uh, the entire case rests on a lone, what they call ear witness, not an eyewitness, but an ear witness, um, which is that uh, his friend's then 74-year-old grandmother um, claimed that she heard his voice during the robbery. And she claimed that one of the people who broke into her house and like killed uh, her grandson was Prakash. Um, and so... That's, uh, um, insane. It's totally insane. And yeah. um, so like when they in the trial where they first charged him with murder that was later overturned, um, they refused to allow an expert on false confessions to take the stand. Um, so this is like this is all like built on like a total house of cards. There's like no reason. There's no evidence for any of this whatsoever. But I mean, I think like. Prakash is just really like his energy level is like through the roof. Um, he had so much energy at the rally today and he's just like this brilliant organizer because he, he organized his own release from jail. Right. Um, and you know, yeah, that's I pretty cool. Like it's like, it's, it's amazing. Because you, know, you have to learn organizing skills somewhere. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, from jail, he would use his limited phone time to like call radio shows and call um, like newspapers. And he would just like leave them messages telling him about like what happened to him. And so I was on a call with him and his lawyer and like these other people from the Free Precaution Alliance last week. And everyone was like trying to figure out what like what all needs to be done for the rally. Um, and then Prakash was just like doing so much shit. Like he was about to, he was like getting ready to meet with his lawyer. But then he was like, yeah, I plan to call like all like I plan to call all these news stations. I'm going to call like Brooklyn Eagle. I'm going to call Pix11. I'm going to call like this other news station. And he was like trying to like coordinate and organize his like mm -hmm. own interviews mm -hmm. while getting ready for his pretrial hearing like while meeting with his lawyer the, and this like, guy is single-handedly more organized than the u.s left i know right right, right. <laughs> and like a lot like the people in this alliance are like like really brilliant too you know a lot there are like some people in this organization who uh were friends for, with prakash who um met him while um while uh they were in jail together um like there are like 19 year olds uh, who are part of this alliance who organized with him and you know i've heard them speak uh at a couple of the rallies and they're like 19 and they spent time in jail and they have like like such a smart like an intelligent analysis of the system just from you know, spending time in Rikers and like talking to Prakash and yeah, it's really incredible. Um, it's really, really incredible. Um, and you know, like one of the speakers brought up, uh, one of the speakers at the rally today, he brought up this really good point, uh, which is that, you know, families of people who, of people like Prakash who you know, are in jail or like are sentenced and then sent uh, sent to prison. It's a really like lonely and isolating experience for them. And he made this like really good point that um, their family members serve the sentences with with them. You know, when Prakash was in jail for six years, his mother like served that sentence with him. Um, so yeah, yeah. There are like there are a few videos that I wanna I wanna show. Um, um I guess I can share my screen. I think uh, Stu has them has it up and ready. Yeah. I, I, I see something. Yeah, no, I have them. Uh which one okay. do you want? The Twitter one or the, the files? Uh, let's start with the files first. Um, the first one. First. This is Prakash's speech at uh, the rally this morning. Thank everyone for coming out here today. I know it's cold out here. Um, I just want to thank everyone, every single one of you from the bottom of my heart personally for coming out here. Uh, it means a lot to me and my family and, and, and my team. Um, all right. Today, right, I had a scheduled, a scheduled appearance for 12 p.m. My judge took upon his own initiative to push that appearance to 2.30 to make sure that this doesn't happen. But it ain't stopping me. It ain't stopping none of us, right? All right. I'll be here till midnight if it happens. Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz. Fuck Katz. Fuck Katz. She is a prime example of what you call a corrupt politician that doesn't care about the community. 
She's here putting up a fake smile on her face just to maintain her voters. We, the people, stand here to demand you, Melinda Katz, to permanently drop all charges against me. And I know you're watching me, and I know your people's watching me through the window right now. And I want y'all to hear this message from me. Prakash Sherman is demanding that you drop all charges against me. Like, honestly, the anticipation, the tension, and everything has just been building up. The system has been dragging me along for over six years now. The 9th of, ne of, of December coming up next, next month will make seven full years that I've been prosecuted within this case. And I'm still being prosecuted for this case. All I have to say is enough is enough. Like, you got the message, do us right. Um, my attorney, honestly, I, it, my timing was off today. My attorney was supposed to be here to speak to y'all. He's tied up right now with an appearance, um, on another case. So, um, for those folks that want to stay out, um, and support me can stay. And for those that can't, I understand it completely. Um, but I just encourage everyone here to continue supporting me no matter what. That's all I ask for. Thank you all for your time. Um, your dedication to me. And on three, on three, three, two, one. Free Prakash! Great. Thank y'all. Yeah, you're muted. That guy's cool. Um, so yeah. the guy sitting on the steps right there, his name was Jacob. Um, and he met Prakash at Rikers because he he was teaching like some sort of like music class or music program for the for the prisoners and he heard about Prakash's Prakash told him about his case and he helped uh he helped uh Prakash organize uh, organize for his release from jail and he was actually fired for that for helping him organize um the guy in the back holding the sign that's a, a friend that prakash met while in jail um Stu, can you play the second video that was in the file yeah so after the rally we marched across the street to melinda katz's office and like i said before yes, uh you know they were the people in the office like saw us and got disturbed and um one of them called the cops this blonde lady here who you'll see uh and so this is them when they came out of the building so yeah go ahead Stu. no peace no justice no peace no justice no peace look at her smiling look at her smiling over there, there you go. Go. let me say something let me say something to you let me say something to you these two represented officers were one of the highest misconduct yep. in, the in, the in the fucking country. In the fucking country. In the country. Look at the fuck out here. Look at you. 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 Look at but they, but they living on a pension. In, they living on fucking Long Island. They're not. They don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck about us. You don't care. Yo, de escalate, de escalate, de escalate, de escalate. Yo, de escalate, de escalate. Get their paycheck from the city, and they take that shit back to Long Island, and they put black and brown yep. youth in jail. Yup. Yep. These are these are two members. These are two corrupt members of the Queens District Attorney's Office right here. Right. And they're proud of it too. Look at He's a detective. 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 He
Go ahead. Don't act, they, don't think you're not a part of the world like your children is not a part of the world. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you guys have to say? Even the police are here, you still kill. What do you have you guys have to say about this? Why does the millennia come downstairs? They send their fucking little minions. I'm not wasting my time. There's like no remorse on their face at all. No. It makes me so fucking mad. All right, folks, let's gather in. Smug motherfucker standing there in his tactical vest. Yeah, they're they're just yeah. they're just disturbed. They're just mad that they have to they have to deal with the noise and mm -hmm. um the ruckus. Yeah, the fucking rabble. Like oh, yeah. it's, it's such an inconvenience right, right, right. for them to have to to have to be confronted with the fact that they don't do their fucking jobs. Yeah. But there's one more video. This one's really cool. Um Stu, can you play the Twitter video? Uh so last week uh as part of like diversity and inclusion. Melinda Katz held this Diwali event. Um, and then members of the Free Prakash Alliance uh, signed up, because this is free to sign up online. And they got tickets and they went there and they disrupted Melinda Katz's speech. Here, here, that the Melinda. Umbridge to the language. May I apologize on behalf Prakash, of the Prakash, jump on charges! Ladies and gentlemen, this is what America is about. However, what? I love that. This is what America is about. People yelling at me because it's <laughs> my That's some class day code charges. right there. Drop the charges. Good on them Jane. for showing up. This is great. Drop the charges. Yeah, and, and Katz is weaseling her way into the Drop community the to, charges. to like, do this event. Free for Pat Sherman! He's innocent! He was a child! Oh, um, on behalf of Queen's County. He was a child! Everybody over here. Just walk off. Why are you still talking? On behalf of Queen's County, let me just say I apologize. I apologize for the interruption of such a solemn holiday like Duwali. Such a solemn holiday like Duwali. Solemn holiday? What are you talking about? I'd be really interested to see if this is a tradition of hers or if this is something she just started it's, doing. It's, it's, it's a John and party holiday. It's not a solemn holiday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Please tell us what Diwali is all about. What a fucking farce, though, to, oh, yeah. to celebrate Diwali as part of like diversity and inclusion while you're while you're just throwing black and brown youth into prison. It's literally that episode of The Office. Except even more. <laughs> and she went into his community too, right? Like, he's in her yeah. way in. Free Prakash! Free Prakash! The solemn holiday thing is fine. <laughs> so fucking cynical. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, that's it. Um, so the Pr Free Prakash Alliance has just been. Demanding that Melissa Kat, Melinda Katz um, drop all the charges against Prakash. Um, so if you want to help out, uh, you should email or call Melinda Katz's office, demand that she drop the charges, uh, donate to his GoFundMe. Um, also, Is there a look script up free that you can share. Hmm. Or do they, do I don't they have, have something on... usual that they go? Yeah, yeah. If, if yeah. you get it, just send it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, so do that. Donate to his GoFundMe. Um, yeah, that's it. Was there any update on uh, like how <laughs> high Winston? <laughs> uh, how did the trial wrap up today? I assume they're just gonna 
have another hearing or so in a couple of weeks? Well, or... I, I, I thought this was supposed to be the last one, but I think in that Queen's Eagle um, article, um, they said that he had another one in January before his mm-hmm. like final trial trial, which is supposed to be like early in 2022. Yeah, so we should make a note and let's try to revisit that mm-hmm. that case when it comes back up again. Because yeah, this yeah, is definitely horrendous. The kid's what, 21, 22? He just turned 22. He just turned mm-hmm. 22. And he lost he lost six years of his life in jail. Like that's unimaginable to me. He just got out in January of 2021. And he hasn't been able to go anywhere. He's been under house arrest this whole time. Um, so he, he, he can, he can't really leave his house. Um, you know, today, the only times he can leave his house are for, to go to, you know, visit his lawyer or, um, uh, go to pretrial hearings like he did today. And so today, like after the rally, like a lot of people, we all went out to like, go get something to eat. Um, just because he never really gets a chance to like go out and eat. So. That's white privilege in action that Rittenhouse got out on bail, you know, like a year ago and he's been, you know, living free ever since and cries on the stand. And this kid has been in jail for six years and just has to fight every single day to, to advocate for himself for a crime he didn't even commit. You have to fight for the littlest things in these in these cases, you know, the um, just the most basic of shit, you know, uh, there is like another a family that we had been working with, um, the family of Matthew Felix. He was another guy who was shot and killed by police. I forget what year, but he was really young too. Um, He's like 19, 20, 21, something like that. And the police would not release any information um, about what happened. Like they would not release, they wouldn't release the names of the officers involved. Um, And so the family, um, the family kept trying to uh, schedule schedule a meeting with was it Letitia James, who's the attorney general. Ch- kept trying to get a meeting with her to get like more to get like any info about what happened, to get the names of the officers, and they just like kept like um, um, sort of like dismissing her and you know not dismissing them and not, you know, scheduling a meeting and not like meeting with them. Um, but I mean, they took, they finally released the names of the officers, but it took, you know, months of, yeah. yeah. Like legal minutia uh, has, has allowed that, that kid to, to shed charges and shed charges to the point where he's not going to face any consequences at all. But the same legal minutia can just be used to completely fuck over an innocent person of color like it just it makes me so upset so yeah let's keep following this uh we posted the gofundme in the link below uh the the da is on twitter she has two accounts and she's a she's a low b so i'm gonna go fuck with her later i know that's not really exactly praxis but it'll make me feel better um so yeah try to keep following this story thank you thank you amanda yeah i mean that that guy seems so inspiring to me i mean just watching him speak and yeah uh, with so much confidence and he's not bending to the plea deal you know mm-hmm. and, and you know to me that's you know big respect yeah for him. it just like wrecks me inside that he's he's so he, he's just a kid and he he is has to be that strong and composed mm-hmm. like he's a product of all this strife so i like it, it's yeah as, for I as mean, brave as he in is, is it like makes me want to cry no no <laughs> definitely he um I mean, he basically grew up in jail and he, I mean, like, he's like quite traumatized from it. You know, he um, attempted suicide a couple of times while he was in jail. So it's really remarkable that he even was able to organize for his release and was Mm -hmm. able to put together this um, coalition. And he like continues to, uh, you know, like organize for his campaign at the level that he does. Yeah. It reminded me of the Khalif Browder story. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah.